Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's me, the Metaverse Explorer. I'm back again to update you on what's happening in Star Atlas. Just a random small video nowadays, guys. Just wanted to keep you guys uh, updated in the loop what's happening. This is just a small video that was released by Star Atlas. It's looking at the uh, Fimble BIOS pack light, and it goes through UE5 as well as virtual reality. Now, I know some people have already seen this. This video is like, I don't know, three days old, because I try and be like, you know, the same day something comes out, I try and cover it. But this is like a day, uh, three days old. So I, I just wanted to actually go through it, watch it with you guys, and see just the detail that we can see on this Fimble BIOS pack light. It's been like two years, and the uh, the the music is still okay. I don't mind it. Yeah. Look at this. Very nice, right? The detail is very very good. Yeah, and I think this is, uh, I think not this one specifically, but someone else was using VR to go through it. It just gives off that, like, uh, uh, junkyard vibe, doesn't it? Yeah, like, which is what it's supposed to be, right? It's, it's you're building your own ship. Now, this is what I found cool. This is, like, the engine room or the nuclear reactor or fission reactor, whatever you want to call it. We don't, we don't know yet, I think. It's got a power source, right? And in Star Atlas, all the ships have a power source. Um, and depending on how big that power source is, is how uh, effective your guns are going to be. So I learned, because I have an ATS Enforcer myself, if you have a, uh, a, a medium power source, but the gun is a large gun, then you won't be able to operate that uh, uh, gun effectively as a large gun. You'll have it like halfway between medium and large. So it's not optimal. So best case, upgrade your power source if you can, right? Anyway, so I think I just saw a hand in here. So this was the VR section. Yeah, this is someone looking around. Yeah, awesome. All right, let's end this here. Let's go and look at the rest of the video, what I'm actually going to be covering. Today, we're going to go through a small process of voting for Star Atlas in an award. Um, on top of that, we have um, my uh, video that I'm currently working on. I'm going to ask you what else I, uh, you guys want me to work on. Then I also have some um, images from the um, faction, from the, um, um, what do you call it? the foundation room, so that uh, we can get to know what Michael Wagner is talking about a little bit. And then on top of that, we'll see what ships are currently selling on the market and what's going ahead right now. Let's go ahead and first look at the Games 3, the Gamers Choice Award for January 31st. The nominations are now open, guys. You can go ahead and vote for Star Atlas. Most anticipated game, um, best game lore um, nominee, of course, Star Atlas. Best game trailer. The trailer was pretty good, let's be honest. And most anticipated game um, as well. So let's go ahead and actually go and vote because I wanted to vote. I hadn't voted yet, so I'm going to go ahead and vote. Uh, it, it, um, there is going to be a live stream that starts in 13 days. You just have to sign up using any... This is another thing that got me still. You just had to sign up using a, like a, a, a regular email. So I'm sure a lot of people could sign up to this as well. Uh, game of the year. Big Time, Illuvium, Blankos, Undead Parties, EVIO. I've played, um, I know Big Time, Illuvium, Blankos. I know EVIO. I don't know Undead Blocks, but even just the, the graphics of it, I know I'm not, I'm not that uh, interested in them. Blankos is more of just a, like a casual party. Evio is FPS. It's not the great. Illuvium, very li high likelihood. And then Big Time. Big Time looks pretty good versus Illuvium. Ooh, it's hard to choose, hard to choose. I'm going to go with Big Time so far. Yeah, so I think they might win. No, you know what? Let's help Illuvium out a little bit. Let's help Illuvium. You know, they are like kind of the competitors, the, the um, uh, uh, friendly rivalry between Illuvium and Star Atlas. We know this, right? Let's help them out a bit. Go to Illuvium. Most anticipated game presented by Sequence XYZ. I'm going to say most anticipated game. Oh, Star Atlas. I'm going to be super biased to you guys know that. Content creator of the year. Now, hopefully I am on one of these lists later on, in, like in two, three years when I'm able to cover a whole bunch of different games, when I might have my own editor, when I ha might have my own social media manager, and, you know, just start creating really good content. Um, of course, I'm just starting out. I only do this in my spare time, so I'm not on this list. I don't expect to be anywhere near this list, right? We have Keggy, uh, Keggy Jun, 
Kagijin, I don't know how to say his name. Uh, Real Jonah Blake, don't know him. Crypto Stash, I know him. He does very good content. Spike is okay. Um, I haven't watched much of his content, and I know Bryce Ent. Bryce Ent, I know, recently won a, a, um, uh, an award previously, um, and I know Crypto Stash, he does very good videos, but they're a bit too clickbaity and a bit too eccentric. Um, so I don't know. I don't know who to go with. I'm definitely not going for Kagi. Let's be honest here. Um... Mm, Spike, you're the outlier. Let's go, Bryson. Bryson, because he's a fellow man of color, if you know what I mean. Um, best game law, game law, big time. I don't know much about the law in big time. Pet hooligan, not really. Illuvium, <coughs> excuse me. Illuvium has really good law. Star Alice has good law as well. But I would say Newt is doing a better job in the law compared to Illuvium. So I'm going to go Star Alice. Best game trailer. Illuvium had a good uh, trailer. Grapnel had a good trailer. Uh, Metalcore had a good trailer. Bornless, I've not seen their trailer. Star Atlas, baby. Best action adventure. Ooh, action and adventure. Action. 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 Metalcore. It looks like the best action game. These are all like exploratory game. Uh, Ad Illuvium is an adventure game, um, but it's a tip up between these two. Yeah, so I think Metalcore has it for now. Best mobile game. I'm not a mobile gamer at all. I would have to defer to like what is what uh, Feet in Arena. I've seen these. I've seen Guild of Guardians. Let's go Guild of Guardians. It's the thing that that gets me in my mind most. Best sports game. So rare. It's not really a sports game. It's like a fantasy sports game. Fantasy card game. Yeah, it's not you playing sports. It's you just putting cards up and hope they win. Yeah. Rivals, I don't know. Rumble Kongs, don't know. Eden Brawl, don't know. STG for I don't know any of these sports games. Can you tell I play sports? Yeah. Um, let's go with So Rare. Best casual game: Blancos, uh, Townstar, Sunflower Land, Axie Infinity, Legends of Venari. Don't know that. I think Blancos is actually the best casual game. Best RPG game: Role playing game. Role playing. Either Big Time or Illuvium. Let's go to Illuvium. Uh, I'm gonna start going quickly here. Best FPS game: Undead. Uh, dead drop i think evio is actually the best the the how easy it was for you to just drop in and have a game in evio amazing amazing best strategy game gods unchanged splinterlands planet mojo axie skyweaver i don't know it's either splinterlands or unchained i'm gonna go unchanged because i want to support imx as well best esports game uh spider tanks thetan axie unchained eve i think eve has a better esports game Metaverse of the Year, Chibi Dinos, Other Side, World Wide Web 3, Decentraland Sandbox. One of these days, Star Atlas is going to be on here, and it's going to be winning multiple, multiple times, right? Metaverse of the Year, hmm. Sandbox seems to be doing very well. Other Side is the hype at the moment, so uh, uh, hard to say. I think both of these are stagnating, though. I think Other Side is on the way up and is doing a lot better. Um, and I'm not a fan of the voxel art of Sandbox or Decentraland. So I'm going to go over the other side. That's my choice, right? Gaming blockchain of the year. Polygon, IMX, Solana, Ethereum, Avalanche. Definitely not, not Avalanche. Definitely not Ethereum. There are no games on there, right? You try and send a transaction to try and do something on chain. Split between Solana, IMX, and Polygon. Polygon does have um, a good gaming ecosystem, but it's not the gaming ecosystem, right? It's It's... Sure, it's got cheap transactions, but they're going for more real-world partnerships like Disney and uh, Warner Brothers, all this sort of stuff. So, not Polygon. They've got good games, but no. IMX and Solana. We have IMX and Solana. Uh, Solana is my default choice because, you know, we do have Star Atlas here. But unfortunately, we don't actually have many other games on Solana. I know, I know you're going to say we have some other games, but really, like, not to the points that Immutable X is trying to attract them. They're specifically saying they are the gaming chain, right? Oh, gaming blockchain of the year. I'm going to have to go to IMX. I, um, it's yeah, Solana in the close second, but where are all the other games launching on Solana right now? Where are they? I don't see them at all, right? I see it, uh, IMX being, being the gaming chain of this year, at least. Maybe Solana's not ready yet. They're still building. Not yet. Organization of the year, Animoca, Pokestata, Elixir, YGG, Fractal. Uh, I'll go with Animoca. I think they support Star Atlas the most. Studio of the year presented by Ren FT. Don't know them. Gala Games, Mythical, Illuvium. Let's go Illuvium. Right in, what's the most engaging Web3 game community? 
Star Atlas, baby. Let's vote. Nice. Nice. Uh, let's go ahead and do a tweet this. I'll tweet it at Dominic just to see if he still follows me. Dominic Vane, yeah. So Dominic is one of the... Um, he's a very nice interactive um, uh, moderator over at Star Atlas. I like him. He's got good chops. Good. Now, that's the game. Um, Polka Starter. I did catch this very small live stream um, of a, a guy that's sponsored by Polka Starter, I think, on his Twitch called George in the Meta. Um, meme Dreamer, Web3 Games and Meme. Hey, he's stealing, he's stealing my, uh, my uh, brand. So this is him just exploring the Star Atlas showroom for the first time and going through it and uh, um, kind of experiencing it, right? And it's good to see other con content creators when they go through new, um, when they go through it for the first time, they get to they get to experience it for the first time. And I'm like, oh, maybe I should cover this as well. Oh, maybe this is worth a video. Maybe I should focus on this because he was very interested in this, or he spent ten minutes trying to cover this, right? Let's go ahead and see. And this view, this video got a nearly a thousand views, a thousand one point one point one k views. So it's not bad. Um, I don't know why it's not loading. Hurry up. Let's reload the page. And play. Okay, move up. One entries. I am the first entry for the giveaway. Oh, look at that. Look at that. This one looks like a med ship. Yeah, oh, it's in the fucking name. Calico Med Tech. Yeah, so it's very ex exploratory. I'm not a fan of this kind of content where you just sit there and Maybe you, have to wait you talk a little bit, and just a little bit, and like okay. you're not doing yeah, much on screen. Know, I, like I really don't like that type so of content. Narrow. As you can see, I like to talk, so narrow, like get narrow. get the content out there because I know you your time is very valuable and I don't want to waste your time. So I try and get as much content out as I can in this specific yeah. time. So let's go ahead and go through the rest of the thing. He's um, going through the Floyd liner. I think he liked this experience from my perception of it. And then he did try and take some pictures at the same time. Which is pretty cool. It's good to see. It's good to see him um, going through this this uh, motion that a lot of us actually have. And he tried the dog racing. No idea what I'm to find he tried not the dog racing, the normal racing. Yeah. And speaking of racing, I think now is a good time for me to show you what video I'm working on. This is, um, you know, uh, Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, I'm going to show you my next video, which is ten tips and tricks to uh, uh, for racing in the showroom. I was always a fan when I was growing up. I was always a fan of the, you know, 10 tips and tricks to get you started in the game, all of this sort of stuff. So I like that kind of content. So I actually wanted to have a go at doing it myself. I've gone through the um, uh, um, scripting phase. I've gone through the narration phase. Um, I'm now through to the editing phase. So Shadix, I might come to you when this editing is done. I, it has a still a while to go. Man, this is like a full-time job. I'm not joking. It's like, um, I've done through, the, uh, uh, Shadix, I'm going to come to you for um, the, the rest of the audio track to help me. Maybe we'll even some sound effects, give or take. I'll show you the first 30 seconds of what I've done so far. You guys tell me uh, if you're happy with it, if you want me to improve it. Like, just little tips and tricks to help me along the way. Um, so, keep in mind, this is uh, with minimal uh, sound effects. This is, uh, I'm like, maybe... 25% quarter way editing through this entire video. And it's going to be uh, around five minutes long, this video. So let's get started. L you tell me what you think. Do you want to be like these guys? Be so fast that you end up finishing the race with a negative time? Well, you're in the right place. Hey guys, it's me. You're here to find out about racing in the Star Atlas showroom. I'm going to give you 10 tips and tricks to get you on the high score leaderboard or at least get you on the right track and get close to that leaderboard because we have some very dedicated racers out there. Now, before we start, a reminder that the showroom is still in alpha and some of this info might change. Let's get started. Number one, the track layout. You so that's the B-roll in the, in the what you see there. You can see, so all of them are gonna follow the list. The layout, this, Tip number one, tip number two, tip number three. And then in the middle of the screen, I'll blank out everything else and then you'll you'll have the focus. So number one is the layout. I'm gonna have I'm gonna record some videos of you going through the layout, turning left, turning right, all of this sort of stuff. So that's the first 30 seconds, and I'm trying to be a better YouTuber, better content creator, and um, you know, make that first 30 seconds very, very engaging because I know 
everyone starts 100 percent and then it goes down to like 20 percent by by like 30 seconds or by one minute so i gotta really make that first very 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 engaging so yeah you tell me how else i can make it more engaging without you know having blur and things and oh, things shooting at you from all spaces which makes it way too chaotic because i th that's also how i choose to be a content creator right i'm not going to be one of those shilly or like everything's like uh, everything's uh super maxed out content creator no it's like this is what you're here for this is what i've created uh enjoy it if you like it that's it and speaking of if for people liking it thank you to whoever donated my first my first uh, i've got my first donation guys i got a hundred atlas from a wallet to my um atlas uh, uh my arc fund um and i'm gonna show you again here i think i do have it here yeah do you let's go to the end i'll show you here questions post it in the comment section did you like the video make sure you give me a like and a subscribe did you love it donate atlas to my arc fund if you loved it this is my wallet see you in the metaverse yeah so Do someone someone has donated 100 atlas to my atlas arc fund thank you very much whoever that was i saw it super late i don't check it often i don't have any solana in there so it's just like a it's like a dark wallet so um thank you guys whoever donated that i really really appreciate it first time i'm getting an atlas donation so I really love it so that's my video tell me what you think about it in the comment section below how i should change it all right now let's exit that and let's go to um what michael wagner is saying in the foundation room right now now this was a topic that moonmonger brought up and this is about the uh, uh council progression uh council the cpp points right uh because they don't want everyone with a large or a capital or a legendary ship whatever to come into the showroom uh, come into sage and just dominate the entire game space because no one is going to be able to beat their ship right or well, well that's the idea so he's like where the cpp ships where will the cpp ships be uh, available for borrowing come from because remember you have to put up your own ships as collateral then you borrow uh cpp ships and then you go and level up with those ships okay where are those ones you're borrowing coming from right will there be an expansion to the ship supply will the available quantities be limited so michael wagner let's read what he's saying and it's a long one here so i'm just going to zoom in so you guys can read it's a topic of heavy discussion within the economic team. The most likely solution is through the use of phantom ships, non-NFT and non-tradable assets. So guys, like I'm going to stop here and say, remember, they're figuring this out. OK, so this information might not be fully accurate by the time this whole thing comes out. Um, the most likely solution is through phantom ships, non-NFT and non-tradable assets. The reason is that the inventory would either need to come from currently unsold ships, primary market inventory, or from the artificial inventory mechanic. It's unlikely we have sufficient quantities of unsold inventory of varying sizes and classes to satisfy the demand for loaned ships. So what he's saying is that we, the Startless team probably doesn't have enough of the um, um, normal baseline ships to accommodate CPP ships that people will try and take a loan against their normal ships again I, I notice i'm just saying ships and ships and ships i hope this makes sense to you guys but in the meantime pepe is here make sure you like and subscribe we're also exploring the potential of incorporating our own form of lending protocol that would enable p2p lending this is also one thing because i know star atlas did say they don't want to develop this themselves they wanted the community to develop this but no one has done it so far and this comes back to my previous point in solana where are all the damn solana devs Star Atlas has nearly everything on chain. They had a hackathon. There's a whole, there's supposedly a whole, it's like a narrative now. There's supposed to be a whole bunch of uh, Solana devs. Where the hell are they? Build something for Star Atlas, right? Maybe we should put up a bounty. Don't know. Um, so, so it seems like Star Atlas themselves will be doing this uh, um, P2P lending protocol. We'll see. We'll see. Um, though some of these naturally wouldn't be free. However, one, uh, one could use score earnings to offset the expense of renting a ship. Nevertheless, the fastest, simplest, and most fair solution is likely to use this phantom inventory as a temporary solution while we sort out the longer-term mechanics. Given the evolution of the player progression system, I'm, I've advocated heavily for having a loaner system in place that doesn't penalize people who purchase large fleets or larger class ships. Um, perhaps only larger class ships before the progression system was designed. And I, um, yeah, so yeah, I, I get what he's saying. And I don't want to force everyone to go out and purchase smaller class ships just to progress through the game. This is, this is a big problem. Yeah, it, it needs a solution. 
Um, if the solution is a P2P lending pro program, then possibly. If the solution is a tweaking of the CPP, uh, maybe. Um, I, I Honestly, I don't know what the right solution is for this, right? But they're working on it. They're working on it. Just like everything else in Star Atlas, they're working on it. Give them some time. Um, and to follow on from this as well, someone asked about, have you planned yet how the CSS land plots will be sold in the future and when they would be sold? Referring to the unsold claims, Sage, claims after Sage, whatever. Um, we haven't finalized a plan around future sales. He's talking about the um, uh, CSS plots, right? Um, I would note that we do intend to leave, stars, leave start sequence inventory online after January 31st. So these are the rest of the CPP land plots that are still on sale at the moment. Um, and they go, they were supposed to go off sale at 31st, but now it seems like they might be staying there. Though it wouldn't receive any of the perks currently available. And remember the perks available is that you get some of these extra um, benefits uh, attached to it. In terms of where I think it will go is some, of, some type of staged release based on demand. And the new plots probably will not be available until we have the plot selection process available. I do expect some lots to be priced higher than others, which might just det uh, determine internally, which we might determine internally. As you know, people will need to purchase both their plots and buildings in the future with expected premiums based on location within the CSS. Uh, yeah, all of this is like future, future, future. I, it's, it's, it's good to think in the future like this for me, but it's like, no, what are we doing now? Let's sort the now because you won't have a future if you don't sort the now. For example, one question I have now is, how is the funding going? Very, very quiet on this front. We don't know. Michael Wagner keeps saying that uh, uh, we are progressing as normal. We are full steam ahead. Yeah, but that doesn't answer the question of if there's still a future. Do you have funding to continue? What's the point? I, kn I know I can assume as a rational person that if you're going full steam ahead, then you probably have funding. But we don't know right we don't know so how am i supposed to make decisions based on that yeah you, you just very simply keeping things very very simple yeah it's it's hard at the moment anyway let's go back oh i need to re i need to uh i need to uh update my ships guys i need to refuel my ships 54 minutes i was lucky let's refuel now i i am i'm a big fan of the Earthpool jet jets i've been dcaing into them because i think they are a very very good deal uh, we can go back and even see um, the Galactic Dash and see what the best discounts on ship prices are at the moment. The Fimble Airbike, 86%. Opal Jet, 85%. The EOP, 84%. X6, 84%. Opal Jet Jet, 84%. So they're, like, they're still on massive, massive, massive discounts. And we think about it. Why are these ships on massive discount? A whole bunch of them, a whole bunch of people bought them at VWAP and they're selling them because they don't want them. Is it possible because they know that the rest of the, 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 the future is super uncertain, right? Is it because they don't have funding? We don't know, right? And so some people um, say, well, that's a risk I cannot accept. So I have to sell my ships now and recoup what I have. You know, it's called the sunk cost fallacy. Just because you've put uh, $10,000 in there doesn't mean you have to write it all the way down. You can save $1,000, $2,000, $3,000 and get out if you need to. Now, I'm not advocating for people to get out of Star Atlas, right? Don't get me wrong. I'm not negative here. I'm just saying, being a rational person, the decisions you make has to have some uh, uh, basis in reality. Yeah? Anyway, anyway, let me go ahead and actually refuel this before I forget because I'm very bad at this. Um, don't forget, the Jeeves bot is there, so you can go ahead and send Atlas to the Jeeves bot. Oh, I'm out of fuel. That's okay. I love the two for fights. It takes forever. Look, two days, two days, seven hours till I even have to refuel. So let's leave it there. Um, let's go ahead and look at the rest of the market. See what is selling at the moment. Let's go ahead and update this. What's been sold recently? One day ago, Unibombers. Ooh, someone's been selling some Unibombers. They sold three at $12.42. Uh, people are buying Opal Jet Jets. Ooh, lots of Opal Jet Jets being, being bought. $46.48. Visa's Amboy for $185. Mmm. Mmm. Let's see. I want to see in the large class ships uh, what um what has the highest volume at the moment. Capital, Commander, and large. Let's look at these large ones. The Agrica Sampa has been has had zero volume. No one's buying or selling the Agrica Sampa. Well, someone has to have it first to buy it, uh, to sell it. 
The uh, BitBoat has the second lowest volume at 1.5K. The Rainbow Arc has 12,000 volume, not bad. The R8 has the biggest volume at $40,000 with a discount of 82%. Very, very, very nice. Now, I was actually wondering, what do you guys think of this strategy? I can't afford an Arc now. Should I go ahead and get a PSR8, use that to play, and use that to save for an Arc? Um, or, or, or use that to generate enough income for an ARC, right? Because obviously I can get into the large class because remember, there's such a big differences with the classes. Should I uh, get an R8, use that to generate enough income uh, to at least uh, save for an ARC a lot faster um, and then sell the R8, add it to my income and that should be enough for an ARC. Is that a good play? You guys let me know. I don't, I don't know. Like, because uh, an R8 is pretty is valued pretty well right now. Okay, it's got a minus 82%. The other thing I was going to do is the Grenadier. I know people are sleeping on the Grenadier. I know the team said they are going to actually uh, restat the Grenadier. Um, and it's still a very important ship that we will be able to use in Sage, right? Um, the Ogreka Thripid as well has high volumes. It's also got a massive discount. So I think the Thripid, the Grenadier and the R8, I, I should... Uh, position myself in one of these three and then when the time is right i might be able to sell out of uh, all three and try and get a rainbow arc because the arc is my end game ship okay that's my 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 ship i don't need anything bigger than a large i don't need a capital at all i just need the rainbow arc because what am i what, i have the arc fund i have my chi i have my ohm i need an arc and hopefully we can combine them all into one super mecha rainbow ship okay that's it for now. Thank you guys for watching as always. Really appreciate it. Let me know what you think about everything I asked in this video. Um, once again, I apologize. It's like 26 minutes. Uh, I try and keep things short, but I got to get what I want to talk out out there. Go ahead and vote for the Star Atlas Game Award, okay? Um, most anticipated game, best game lore, best tutorial, uh, best game trailer, sorry, and most anticipated game. Go ahead and vote. Ciao for now.